Oi, what's up boys and grots and little snots and can't forget the digger knobs. So this is a painting tutorial I made for painting Makari, the new model. So I start off with Elysian Green as a base coat to go over all the green areas. Now I wanted the grots to be a bit more light skinned than the orcs that I've done. So I've done Gazgol and I used a darker base coat for him. So I'm using Elysian Green here just to give the grots a little bit more of a bright skin tone. So this is a really nice colour to use. Obviously you need a lighter primer so it's going to be easier to apply. You could most likely do it over a darker one but you're going to have to do a lot more coats. Now I do have a watered down paint here just so I can do a couple of coats and not have it too chunky or thick as the base coat. Now he's got a lot of flesh exposed, he's a really small miniature, so just make sure you get that paintbrush all into those little gaps. So make sure you get in all those nooks and crannies. As I say, he's a really small miniature. He might not look it on camera, but he's tiny. So you want to make sure you have a really nice base coat all over. So now I'm doing another base coat. Because you can still see a bit of imperfections. You can see the grey coming through underneath. So a second coat would be really good to apply. And obviously any areas you may have missed, you can catch it on the second time round. Now it's not going to hide any detail as long as you thin down your paint, either with medium or water. Now I use Wraithbone here as the base coat for the horns. So just make sure you get a nice application of this all over. This is a really small detail. As I say, he's a tiny little miniature. So just take your time and make sure you base coat all those horns just take your time so it doesn't go anywhere else obviously if you make a mistake you can fix it up at this stage it doesn't matter too much if you do make a mistake if you get some on the helmet or you get some elsewhere because we can fix that up later so that's what it looks like when the base coat's done it's quite a nice color you could use a different bone color if you wish. Now I'm using Plague Bearer Flesh. I really like this on orc skin for these more natural orc skin tones. Basically I'm using it like a shade or like a glaze. But you can pull the paint around the model so you can sort of place it in the middle of the back and just pull it all over his arm, all over the rest of his back and just use what's on your brush. Now as you can tell it's basically tinted it in like a nice green, sort of yellowy green colour and then it's brought out a lot of the detail and the muscles and all that sort of stuff. Now I'm going to use Skeleton Horde and I'm going to use this on the horns. So that's what it looks like once it's applied on the horns, brings out the detail, it makes them look a little bit more aged. So it's a really easy way to add detail and to get into those creases and to add a bit more colour and definition to this. Now I'm adding snake bite leather to the strap and to the wood areas. Now I really love this colour, it's a nice rich brown colour and it's a nice base or start for wraps and even wood. Now I'm using Doom Ball Brown for his dress piece or his little skirt here. Now it's got a lot of red in this brown. It's a really nice rich brown with a bit of a red tint to it. So I thought this would be a nice base color to start the dress.
which we'll eventually add red to. Now I've quickly got his eyes in there, added red to them, and I've added red to the skirt. Now this red is corn red, is what I used. I tried to leave some of the doom ball brown in the creases. Now another little tint of play bearer flesh all over his body, just to bring up that darkness. So just make sure you get all those green areas. So it all dries at the same sort of time and get it all done so you don't have to come back to it. Now I just make sure it doesn't pull down the crease of his back there. Because his back is quite muscly and he's quite a ripped little grot right about there at least. So just make sure it's all good. Now we're going to use Lead Belcher. I love this paint. It's a really nice base coat for metal. So just go around his crown or his hat here. Just make sure if you can, try your best not to get it because you don't want metal flakes all over the place. So just take your time, get a small brush. I changed my brush size. Now once you've done the silver areas, you want to hit it with some null oil. You want to darken that up and really bring it out. Add some shadow. Just don't overload your brush too much. I took a little bit off here. I wiped it on my finger or you can do it on a paper towel. Now everything on my brush here is all I need really. I'm not going to need any more. Just want to apply it to those areas you want darkest. Now we're going to start doing this little furry area of his hat. Corn red as a nice base coat. It's a nice dark rich red so that's what it looks like once you put on the corn red now back to elysian green now you want to add this to all the raised areas you can see that i added it to the muscles in his arm just the tip of his nose you want to grab all those chin along his fingers you just want to make all the muscles stand out so i'm going to put a bit on his back here as well Make sure that it's not applied too chunky because you don't want to hide all that detail. As it dries it will blend in a lot more. It might look a little bit odd at first. But once that paint dries it always blends in more. And not isn't as bright. Now we're going to do that again but with ogre and camo. Now we're going to try and do a little less. A little bit on his nose. A little bit on his muscles here just a little bit there so as it dries again it's going to blend in with the elysian green more so you want to try and pick out each finger here as i say it looks a little bit bright now but once it dries it will all blend in more and it will have nice highlights that you just want to bring out all those details like his fingers the ribs, as you can tell, just under his arm there. A bit of his tummy. You want to bring out some of his knee. So the knee separating a bit of shadow in between. The fingertips. His cheek. His ears. Along his back there, I added some little bit of his muscle on the back of his leg there now we use Kislev flesh and we do his lip here but also I put a bit inside his ear just to have like the fleshy more warm parts as sort of a pinkish peach flesh tone human flesh tone I just like how it looks on these orcs that I tried to make look a bit more natural. So his lips are done, his ear. And it blends in really nice with these earthy, natural green tones. Now we're going to grab a lighter red so we can just add some detail. Now you try and go over the top and stipple 
and just try and get the raised texture if you can here. So you just want to kind of dab and just try and grab just the tips of that fur and leave some of that dark red underneath is the key here. So now as you can see it's had some nice brighter red and it has that shadow underneath now from the base coat that we used. So it's making it look like fur or fuzzy texture. So it's quite nice. So just want to grab all those tips of that fur. Now while I'm here, add a bit of black wash or null oil inside the eye. So I did the red earlier and I just want to bring out that now we did all the gold parts with Retributor armor. So it's the tip of his sword, his little gold cuffs there. And also he has parts of his sword that I did gold. So it was a little bit messy because I know I can clean up, up later when I do the wood. Now we're going to do a little bit of a cheat here with the stone in the middle. We're going to use Soulstone Blue. We're just going to grab that little stone in his bracelet there. This is a really nice way of doing gems and stones without too much effort really. So we just put it on then we come back and we clean it up a bit. Now we're going to do his shoes now and I've other little bits and pieces with Deathclaw Brown. It's a little bit like snake bite leather but as you can tell it's more lighter than the wraps and the wood. Now we had to use a shade just to bring out the detail a bit more. So I liked Reichland Flesh Shade quite a lot. So I used that just so you can see the detail. Brings out and shows you the definition of the shoe a bit around those. Now I went over the wood areas and now I come in and I put this Reichlin over the gold areas. Now I love Reichlin Flesh over Retributor Armour. Some people use Agrax or other colours. I feel these are a match made in heaven. Just really makes that gold rich. So you can see now the little buckle, the earrings, the gold on his sword. It really pops and it adds some shadow. Now we're going to use Evil Sun Scarlet on the skirt piece. Now I tried to make it look all worn. So what I did is I highlighted the edges. And then I brought the brush up and down and in directions just to add all these little tears or texture to the skirt. Now another paint I really love is this Vallejo Air Chrome. Now you don't need very much. You just want to add it to the most sharpest areas or the highlighted areas. So we go around this spike, it just really makes it look like it's sharp. So you can tell by these pictures that Bakari's finished. Now I will show you him again towards the end of this video, but that's pretty much Bakari finished now. Now I'm going to give you a quick demonstration of what I've done to the banner. Now, Troll Slayer Orange, personally, I'd probably say use a better orange if you can, because this one took a few fin coats to get to this stage, or to get it to how I wanted it. So, I'm sure there's other oranges out, this is the only one I had. It is a nice colour, but it's more of a layer paint, so it would have been better if I had a more solid colour to start with and put this more of a highlight colour but what I do is really have this fin down and just build it up so I do with the horns orange which are going to be red eventually so his left flesh so I'm going with the second edition theme and it had a fleshy part here but I just thought instead of doing a typical bone make it a bit more fleshy. Now we're going to use Zandri dust for the bone areas. Now obviously this big bone here is going to be Zandri dust. 
because we want a darkish colour that we can build up with some highlights later on and these teeth here so we're going to do all of them as well so we use black contrast so it's black templar so I use this because it's basically a lot more watered down you could say or just it saves me having to add medium or anything like that so I go to that area in the middle and the banner all of that's going to be black add a bit behind the eyes and the nose and around the teeth now I didn't record all of the banner but I'll come towards the end and explain what I did with the rest of the banner so I get a bit of the base here, I get Dark Angels Contrast. Yet again it saves me having to water down or add medium to a dark green paint. So you just want to be careful. You don't have to be too worried, but just try not to make too much of a mess. It saves you having to clean it up later. Now I added a bit of red to his eyes, this little poor bugger's eyes. Added a few highlights that you can't really see that well on camera, but I went round the crisp edges with a green paint and added a bit of highlight. And then I realised I probably didn't have to do nothing to the base because I added Armageddon dust to it. So basically I wasn't able to record me finishing everything on Makari, so I wasn't able to do the whole banner and the base and I believe even Makari I added little bits to a few more little minor details so it's one reason why I didn't put out this video because I was doing all sorts of stuff and I was painting him I was smashing him out and all of a sudden some other stuff life came up and I started working on other videos and then yeah, basically I wasn't able to smash them out as fast as I wanted. But all the rest of the video that you saw was all what I did. And then the banner was separate, Makari wasn't on his base. And yeah, so I thought at the end of this video I could kind of walk through what I did that I probably didn't record. So... So we'll start off where it ended, while I was doing the base. So you can see that I basically added a lot of blood and gore around the Space Marine helmet. Originally added corn red to the eye and then eventually I built it up similar to similar to the red that I did on other parts of Makari so I did corn red and then Mephiston and I put just a little dot of Troll Slayer orange and then I put it for a little bit of a reflection put that little bit of white now I added Kizla flesh or flesh colours to the inside of the exposed part of the head to make it look like a brain or the top of the human that's inside the helmet. Now I basically did the flesh colour and then added a wash, a dark wash, black, known oil put blood for the blood god as well watered it down a little bit just so it would sort of fit into all those crevices now with the base I did basically the same thing I did to the gas skull base that I did and recorded which is using Vallejo pigments so, so the pigments I use after I'd done the texture so I used 
for the dark yellow and then after that just to mellow the yellow a little bit added a light yellow orca so what else I did just added a little bit more detail like a few little stripes down this little part I continued the little scratches or texture on his skirt piece so I built that up to a lighter red so I ended up using some wild rider red because it's kind of an orangey sort of color pastel -y. so you can see I tried to make it look like it was a bit more torn and stuff by adding those parts to it now I'll quickly go over the banner so I did the flash colors added watered down reds to this normally I use some contrast so blood angels red for the deeper parts and then I would have used Wild Rider or Evil Sun Scarlet watered down to get rid of some of that orange. Now on the black I obviously put some greys mixed with black just to edge highlight, add a bit of texture to the cloth. So all those orange colours I basically worked it up to a red. The flesh colour ended up pulling like knoll oil, more so directing it towards the little rivets just to make it look like it's got a lot of decay or weathering and all that sort of stuff around it. Added some silver to the little earring parts, made sure that I put some wash where the welds are. And just here, this bullet hole, this hole here. I added a wash, would have been Agrax, to the bone area. And then came back with like a lighter skeleton colour. Something like a shanty bone. To sort of edge highlight or just add little bits around the edges of that. Obviously I put weather and pigment all over this just to make it look like he's really been in the trenches around the teeth I've put obviously agrax but a bit of null oil as well little just highlights as well there highlighted a bit of grey on this area this backing plate there yeah that was pretty much it unfortunately I wasn't able to record it but hopefully that helps added a bit more of browns to this just to bring out that wood grain a little bit more so I've added a couple of brown colours which would have been some of the snake bite leather but also just a little highlights of death claw and scrag brown So that's pretty much all these different components that build up here. Of course I've added some metal colours. So it'd be your lead belcher and then the more bright colours. So just more so the tips. Just all these rivets here. Just a little dab of that Vallejo chrome that I love. Just like this. That was lead belcher. But then just a little bit of chrome on top just to bring out the highlight. So that's pretty much most of it. Obviously added these transfers. So little things like I did the teeth. So that's like a Zandri dust base. With just little tips of white. Just at the sharpest point. 
So yeah, not quite sure how I want to do my orcs, their bases. So I kind of stuck to the second edition theme that I had. That's why I did this like more of a fleshy colour than a bone colour, because that's how his original banner was. So I try to make his banner look like the second edition one. And this is based on the cover. He, I didn't really like the helmet or the head that he was standing on. The, this model comes with a helmet that he puts his foot on. But just to keep it the same sort of theme as that second edition cover, I thought, why not stick a Dark Angels helmet there? It's pretty much how the cover is. So, yeah. I thought that looked a lot better, having a Space Marine helmet there. I think it was an Imperial Guard one originally. But yeah, I believe that's pretty much it all now, really. He's a tiny little model. Uh, and I used... I'd say it was a snake bite. Well, I believe originally it was skeleton horde and snake bite just to do all these little liver spots or just to add a bit more definition to him. So as you can see, I picked out stuff like the rib cage. Here was a, as I mentioned, a couple of different highlights. So you know, you've got like your skag brown. And then I believe on just a, just a few little tips, added a white or a bone colour, just to really bring out those strands. Did the same to his boot here. Obviously I built it up with layers and added washes to it. Just on those little ropey areas, added like death claw brown and then a little bit of a bone colour just on the little tips or edges just to try and make them stand out so yeah really pleased with how he came out like most of my stuff I could keep him working on him and working on him just to add more and more detail he's a tiny miniature though but he has so much detail and personality I, he was a pleasure to build and paint yeah, I love him even more now, the little git. Just as a little treat, I'll show you the two miniatures so far that I've painted on this channel, side by side. Now, I do want to get the original Makari. I do like my old school, old hammer, and second edition orcs, but... You can't go past this one, right? He's amazing. Still have a lot of love for this gas skull. But the old Makari's a little bit dated, where I feel this gas skull still stands up to a lot of stuff today. Let me know what you think of this. You can see that there's still a nice little size difference between them both. So... That's awesome how the Grot is still tiny and Gazzy's still fairly big. But yeah, I thought I'd show a comparison. People were wondering the size difference. But yeah, I really apologise that I wasn't able to record everything on camera and missed a little bit. But hopefully me going through that helped you understand what I did to achieve this. Any questions, obviously leave them in the comment section and I'll happily answer them if you need any help or whatever. I'm always here. Just ask. No no issues there. But yeah, hopefully you like this lucky little Git Makari. He's finally had his own video. He's a happy little you know what. You know what, Mr. Grot. Yeah. Catch you next time. G the Hyper Sapien out. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs>